Hi guys, so for this video, I am going to be sharing with you how I study for med school. But before we start this video, I want to say thank you for Wondershare PDF Element for sponsoring this video. And if you guys didn't know, PDF Element is a PDF software available both in Windows and in Mac by which you could edit, you could annotate, and you could create PDFs. So if you're using PDFs on a daily basis, this is going to be a very good app for you. In med school, you could use this for highlighting and as you can see, there are a lot of colors to choose from. You could also adjust the transparency and you could have a default highlight. And secondly, unlike other apps, you get to edit even the elements of your PDF. Take note that you could edit these elements in the PDF file. You could edit text, you could delete it, you could rotate images, you can move them, and you could totally do anything on your PDF. And a very powerful feature is that it has an OCR feature by which it could recognize scanned images as searchable and editable text. So these are only some of the useful features that you could do with PDF Element and I will be sharing more of it in this video later on. So let's start. So yung una ko sigurang tip sa inyo is to know what type of learner you are because different type of people learn best in different ways. And with this, you could actually use VART. So visual learner ka ba, auditory learner ka ba, reading or writing learner ka ba, or kinesthetic learner ka ba. So for me, ever since first year, napapansin ko na na mahilig akong gumawa ng mga diagrams, mahilig akong gumawa ng mga flowcharts, mahilig akong mag-integrate ng mga bagay into one single picture. So kapag kabasa ko ng transfer, nagsasama-sama ko yung mga information na magka-connect sa isang picture. And for example, kapag dating naman sa pag-processing ng case, I like it kapag gumagawa ako ng um, flu diagram ng pathophysio kung paano ba nagkaroon to ng gantong clinical presentation, kung bakit ganti lumabas sa lab results niya. So I like connecting them all together through diagrams. And I like things very concise. And I also love using different types of shapes, different types of colors to categorize or just like to connect different points. So with that, I realized na visual learner pala ako. And secondly is napansin ko na I'm also an auditory learner because I love going to classes. I love listening to lectures. Gusto ko kapag ina-explain sa akin ng prof. Gusto ko kapag nagkakaroon ng mga discussions, ng mga exchange, ng mga natututunan. Dahil nga gusto ko naririnig yung mga lectures. I like listening to voice records and kapag may mga additional supplemental na gusto kong Malaman pa, I love watching videos. So, pwede nyo na malaman kung anong type of learner kayo by just observing yourself or pwede kayo mag-take ng um, questionnaire on board. Although, knowing what type of learning style you learn best should not box you into that certain learning style kasi um, VARC is not made for that. Rather, you could use this to know more about yourself, to know more how you could study more efficiently, more effectively, kung saang time ka ba mas magi invest kung ano strategy gagawin mo every time na uuwi ka from school, kung paano ka mag -aaral. So, it's learning more about yourself and being aware and just maximizing kung saan ka mas natututo. And aside from learning more about yourself, you could also learn more about your peers, learn more about others, understanding how they study and allowing them or helping them how to study kung kanyang tutulungan lang kayo and it's really a good way for you to know more about how you learn best. And secondly, connected sa first point which is to choose your resources. So, sinabi kong connected siya sa first point kasi, say, for example, um, you learn best with reading or writing. So, most probably, ang magandang reference for you is books because I do know some of my classmates na 
mas natututo sila kapag nagpabasa sila ng books. Mas gusto nila kapag yung trance is mahahaba. So, gusto nila yung flow na medyo mahaba. Lengthy text. And if you're the type of person, most probably yung magandang resource para sa inyo are the books. And if you're a visual learner just like me, medyo okay naman na sa akin yung trance. Though hindi siya ina-advise na mag-dis lang kayo sa trance. Kasi... Kasi syempre, you have to make sure if tama nga yung mga nakasulat din doon. Do trabaho naman yun ng trans club. Pero in a way, ayun, sinasuggest pa rin naman na kahit na um, merong transes, you should still read your books. Although, ang problem minsan is time restraint. So, and usually naman yung mga transes meron silang input from books. So, for me, okay naman ako sa transes kasi summarized na siya, organized na siya sometimes. Pero usually organized na siya compared sa book na parang paragraph form lahat. At least sa transes naka bullet form na siya, naka-categorize na siya, which I really like. So, mas in favor talaga ako pagdating sa transes rather than books. And for example, auditory learner ka, ano yung magagamitin mong resources for that? I would highly suggest you to attend your lectures. Kung papansin kayo, may mga times na may mga classmates kayo na tulog lang during lectures. So, minsan... Antukin lang talaga sila. Kompleto naman tulog nila pero inaantok pa rin sila. Pero minsan siguro yung mga iba rin na magpupuyat, na mas natututo kapag nag-aaral sila mag-isa, kapag nagbubook, or um, kapag nagbabasa sila on their own kasi hindi sa kanila masyadong effective yung pakikinig. So, eh, hindi nila priority. Pero ikaw, for example, kung alam mo natututo ka in when it comes to lecture, I would highly advise you to go to your lectures on time. Yes, on time. Oh, tinamaan naman ako dun. Pero, ayun. I would encourage you to have a good sleep during the night para hindi kayo antokin during the day. And magkapi kayo, make sure na wala kayong gagawin during the lecture na natapos nyo na yung homeworks or kung may ikakraman kayo, kaya nyo siyang gawin during lunch time. Basta as much as possible, i-dedicate nyo yung time nyo for the lectures, for the lecture itself. Or if mamimiss nyo naman yung lecture pero alam nyo na auditory learner kayo, what you could do is listen to voice records. And so every lecture, kung papayagan kayo ng prof nyo, um, you could, could record their lecture para lang if bigla kang nag-zone out, bigla kang nawala ng, um, bigla kang may dapat gawin, at least meron kang uh, voice record by which you could listen to the professor. And so, ano pa ba? And lastly, is yung kinesthetic. So, usually, yung mga kinesthetic, sila actually yung mga mas natututo kapag hands-on nilang ginagawa using their five senses, ganyan, and they value their experiences kapag mga field trips, interviews, ganun. So, parang more on actual um, na nangyayari. And if you are that type of learner, Matan kayo mga laboratory sessions kapag may mga practical na pwede kayo mag-practice, attend it. So, i-maximize nyo lang um, kapag may mga in-offer na gantong resources. And also, an additional tip is to study, to teach. Siyempre, kapag magtuturo kayo, inaaral nyo naman muna and iniintindi nyo siya. And then, that way, napaprocess nyo information in your own way and you are able to deliver it, you are able to share it in your own terms. So, for me, sobrang helpful nito. Kung wala kang matuturuan personally na kaklase, kahit parang kuwari nagpa-practice ka lang or kinakausap mo yung stock toy mo or nagsasalita ka lang just somewhere, basta you're just trying to, kumbaga, actually teach it. In that way, kasi, di ba, kapag, kapag nasasabi mo yon, kapag um, natuturo mo yun sa iba, alam mo na natutunan mo siya kasi na-explain mo na siya in your own terms. Kung bagay, hindi lang siya memorization na sinasabi mo lang. But it's actually something na nakuha mo, pinroses mo, inintindi mo, and nilabas mo. And shinare mo siya in your own terms. So, sibigin na intindihan mo siya and hindi lang yung mga terms yun naaalala mo you get the concept behind it. And so, kapag nakapili na kayo ng resources nyo, isa pa sa mga magandang pag-isipan nyo is kung magta-digital note-taking ba kayo or yung traditional na nag-print kayo ng transes. So, nung first year actually kami, 
maraming nagpiprint pa ng chances nun. And then eventually, nung tumagal, majority digital na. Because the reality is, habang tumataas yung level mo, from first year, second year, to third year, mas marami yung load na inaaral nyo and mas marami kayong ginagawa. So, I don't actually know guys where I left out kasi naputol pa siya, pala siya when it comes kapag ng 15 minutes. But yun, I think we were talking about traditional versus digital. So yung mga advantages na nakita ko when it comes to digital note taking is first, it saves you time kasi hindi mo na kailangan magprint. Second is that it's very convenient kasi compared kapag traditional na you have to compile it, you have to arrange it. Kapag dating sa digital, pagka download mo palang mismo ng transes, you could already organize it from there. Compile mo sila sa isang folder, which is under the folder of NE6. And then for a topic, kung masyadong madami, compared kapag nagpiprint ka na yung kailangan mo pang isipin kung magpapagbookbind ka, kung paano mo siya i-arrange. So for me lang naman to guys, this is very subjective objective for me. Ito yung mga nakita ko advantages. And the third one is ang linis niya. Isa to sa mga naging dilemma ko nung nag-highlight ako sa papel. So hindi na ako nagpiprint ng chances pero may mga times na kasama sa exams namin yung mga nakasulat sa manual. So nung nagtatry na ako na mag-highlight sa manual namin napansin ko na ang pangit ko pala mag-highlight. Uh, hindi siya diretso and then yung size ng highlighter ko masyadong maliit yung isa then masyadong malaki naman yung isa and kumukulay siya sa likod so for me hindi siya malinis and nasanay din kasi ako from digital na erasable paano kung nung binasa ko pala tong manual na to sa bawa ko tapos parang gusto kong burahin gusto kong bagawin yung highlight so hindi ko na magagawa yun yung solution in doing that was buying a friction highlighter. Though, ang disadvantage naman is syempre kailangan mo mag-invest in a good gadget and syempre gusto mo yung mabilis kung hindi naglalag kasi di ba gusto mo nga makasave ng time and gusto mo very user-friendly siya gamitin for you. So, kailangan mag-invest. And secondly, siguro masakit sa mata compared kapag sanay ka na nakapapil ka lang. So if, if you're planning to transition from traditional to digital, there's gonna be an adjustment period. Pero eventually, um, marami naman akong kilala na nag-shift from um, printing chances to turning digital. So kaya naman siya. Pero kung exams week nyo na and mag, doon ka pa mag adjust mag-print ka na lang muna. So parang i-timing mo na lang kailan ka mag adjust and so I'm gonna be showing with you guys what gadget I use for med school. So in the first year, I actually made a video comparing iPad versus Surface. And to summarize, kung bakit mas pinili ko yung Surface, kasi itong Surface, it's actually a combination na ng isang laptop and a tablet. Compared kapag naka iPad lang ako, na feel ko parang interface niya same lang with the phone, which hindi ako masadong in favor. So I chose the Surface. So, kapag um, laptop mo mo siya, pwede mo siyang iganyan lang kaganto yung hindisura niya. And then, kapag tablet naman, pwede mo siyang iganto. Tapos, nag-highlight ka lang. And yung mismong cover niya actually is a keyboard, which is so cool. So, ito. Ito yung ginagamit ko. And this is a Microsoft a Surface Pro 7. So, meron ka ditong volume, meron ka ditong power switch, meron kang pen. And then, meron kang para sa earphones. Then, meron kang for USB. Tapos, may dalawa pang something dito. Which, di ko siya nakala. Then, meron kang camera here sa back and sa front. Ito, itong keyboard naman, separately mo siya binibili. And then, meron siya magnet dyan. So, yung charger niya, ang cute nito, guys. Kasi, may ilaw siya kapag nakasaksak. And magnetic din siya. So, ayan. Also pala, yung pen magnet din siya. So, hindi siya basta-basta lang mawawala. And meron lang siyang design ng windows here. So, ito yung ginagamit ko ever since first year. May ibang model na first year, pero hanggang ngayon, naka-surface pa rin ako. And sobrang gusto ko siya kasi pwede ko mag-Microsoft um, Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, and Microsoft Excel. Pwede ka din mag-download ng mga programs doon. And pwede ka mag-dalawang modes. Pwede ka mag-tablet or a laptop mode. So, for now, I am going to be sharing with you what apps I use in my 
surface bro. Seven. So the first app that I'll be sharing with you is Wondershare PDF Element. So of course if you're gonna be studying digitally, you'll need the PDF reader for your transcripts and ebooks. And what I usually do is during classes, I'll be um, following the lecturer as um, he or she goes to the lecture and then I will just be um, highlighting um, the things that the lecturer have said from the previous chance. And that is if the lecture is the same from last year. And what I will do is if there are things that isn't in the trans but the lecture added it or it's like an insight or something, I'm just gonna be um, adding those notes in my trans. For example, here, um, as you see from this picture, etc. etc. So just like that. And if there are things na hindi na binanggit ng prof and I think na hindi naman siya important, I would just usually cover it with a box para alam mo yun, mas gusto ko kasi mas concise yung notes. So sometimes sinacheck ko pa rin naman siya. Um, so tatanggalin ko siya, ganyan. And then kung hindi talaga siya necessary or parang nasa picture naman siya, it's explainable even from the other um, uh, notes, uh, tatanggalin ko na siya. So usually, me attending the lecture class is my first read. So usually, may mga highlight na yan, ganyan. And my second read would be understanding my first read. I'll try to simplify all things from the lecture, understand it, and leave the chance in a way na I'm comfortable getting back to it for my last read for the exams. Kung baga, I want to leave um, the chance na, ano na siya, ready na siya for exam and I could just um, go pass through it by that time. And this is only if um, nagawa ko siya ideally. Though, means may mga times na first read ko lang siya from the lecture and then diretso yung exams. So, depende din siya sa load and kung nabudget ka mabuti yung time ko. You could also use this for ebook and the same way na you could also highlight it, you could add text, you could add, you could add text like this and you could add comments um, sticky notes and ayun, marami pa kayong pwedeng gawin dito. Okay, so now of course, kailangan natin ng digital notebook and OneNote is very helpful for um, me when it comes to digital note taking. So for me, hirap ako nang sa para kasi wala akong background on para so I have to make a viewer for myself to compare all of these organisms. So, para mas kita ko yung differences nila, I made a reviewer na tabi-tabi sila, ganyan. And then, as you can see, um, meron dyan mga notes on kung ano yung mga characteristics nila. And, um, ayun, yung mga nagdi-differentiate sa kanila. So, this is good when um, nahirapan kayo sa isang topic and you need a reviewer, you could make it in here. And then, gusto nyo lang minsan mag-notes, so pwede naman kayong mag-notes dito, parang yun traditional lang. Yun nga lang, ito, mas malinis, kasi pwede mo siyang um, dalhin, pwede mo siyang i-edit, pwede mo siyang madali siyang i-modify, kasi for example, ganyan, pwede mo siyang i-move, and pwede ka mag-delete, tas malinis lang siya, ganyan. So, ayun, very important din naman kayong digital notebook. Pwede kayong mag-drawing dyan ng mga diagrams. Pwede kayong mag-drawing dyan ng mga um, ganyan. And then, pwede kayong gumawa ng mga chart to simplify things. Pwede kayong gumawa ng mga tables. Kung may ilipin kayong gumawa ng mga tables. And malinis lang ganyan. Tapos, marami ka din kasi siyang um, color ng pen na pwede gamitin. So, Pwede nga merong ano eh, merong ganito, may glitter. Tapos pwede nyo piliin yung size, ganyan. Pwede nyo piliin yung color, tapos pwede pa kayo mamili ng mga galaxy. Na natin, so wala na ito. Diba? Ang ganda nyo, ganyan siya. So, yun yung mga ginagamit kong apps. And I do hope na you got a thing or two from this video. So, that is all for this video, guys.